Coming up next on Hooten's Arkansas Football. Highlights from last night's high school 4A and 5A semifinal games, including Fort Smith Southside at El Dorado, Bentonville at Texarkana, and Cinderella Stuttgart against Watson Chapel. Plus, we'll show you highlights of the quarterfinals from AAA and AA. Highlights of practically every playoff game from last night, plus pregame pep talks and postgame reaction. Farther in the playoffs than Hampton's ever gone, and boy, I'm proud of how we played. All good. Hooten's Arkansas football is next. You make sure you're physical. Lot riding on the ball game. You get that blood in your eyes, and you play with heart. A week from today and we'll have some state champions. Hello and welcome to Hooton's Arkansas Football. I'm Chad Hooton and we are down to the championship games coming up next Saturday here in Little Rock at War Memorial Stadium and we'll show you how the teams advance to the finals after last night's semifinal games in Class 4A and 5A. We have highlights of those games plus the quarterfinal games from AAA and AA and we'll show you all of those coming up in the next 30 minutes. Take you to Hot Springs for this week's Scholar Athlete of the Week and of course the latest Hooton's rankings. It's all straight ahead and the next half hour we're glad you're here and we'll get started with a look at Class 5A next on Hooton's Arkansas Football. Hooton's Arkansas Football. Arkansas Football brought to you by Lander. And we'll begin our Class 5A highlights in deep South Arkansas where last night the El Dorado Wildcats were trying to avenge a 32-7 loss in their season opener against Fort Smith Southside. It was tied up last night at three in the third quarter when Southside made its move. Watch this, Rebel running back, Farron Bauer tries to go up and over. He didn't get in, but on the next play, sophomore quarterback John Thomas would, and that made it 10 to three. Southside with a touchdown lead. El Dorado came right back though with an 80 yard drive. The big play, a 41 yard pass from Jordan Smith to Curtis Clark. El Dorado would score just a few plays later to tie it up, and the Wildcats would get the ball again in great field position, thanks to Clark's 32-yard kick return across midfield all the way down to the south side 42. From there, El Dorado used the running of Rod Reynolds, who made his first start last night, and another pass play to Clark to set up Chris Hollinsworth for his third field goal of the night. It's a 26-yarder with about a minute and a half left, and Hollinsworth drills it to win it. El Dorado will play in its first ever Class 5A state title game next Saturday night at War Memorial Stadium. Final score, Wildcats 13, Southside 10. We've had a good run. Our seniors have had a, a really good career. And, uh, you know, if you're going to lose, uh, you know, you lost to a good football team tonight, and I wish them well. They, they really made as much improvement from the start of the year to the end of the year. Uh, and, that, and that's why they're still playing. The other Class 5A semifinal game last night was Bentonville at Texarkana. And Razorback fans packed the house as Texarkana made its first trip to the semi since 1990. And visiting Bentonville wasn't getting anywhere on the ground last night as Texarkana held the Tigers to just 99 yards rushing. But Bentonville quarterback Alan Schlagenhaft passed for 218 yards and two first half touchdowns. Schlagenhaft zips one out to Weston Geigel here at the end of the third quarter. And that would set up junior Brian Babers 28 yard field goal moments later. Early in the fourth quarter, Bentonville led 20 to 14. But there's no quit in the Hogs. This was exciting. Texarkana quarterback Josh Potter lost one up to Roy Ross. And the Hogs are in business all the way down to the Bentonville 15-yard line. There's four minutes left. But the Tiger D steps up. Bentonville forced three incomplete passes and then would run out the clock. Bentonville, your Tigers are going to Little Rock. Final score, Tigers 20, Texarkana 14. Wait, pack your bags, we're going to Little Rock. Oh, this is unbelievable. Uh, you know, our kids to, to go on the road and, and beat a terrific Cabot Ball Club and come down here to Texas Canada and beat an outstanding Texas Canada football team, it's just unreal. You know, our, our kids, as well as myself, are on cloud nine right now. But uh, we got to come back down to earth real quick and get prepared to play next week. 
Next week, Coach Weir and the top-ranked Tigers will play El Dorado for the 5A state championship. It's the first time ever for both teams to play in the finals and should make for a big crowd. Kickoff is at 6.30 next Saturday night at War Memorial Stadium. Bentonville and Southside are joined by Russell from the 5A West in our top five, and Springdale finished the year in the top ten. Pine Bluff starts the second ten. The Zebras only lost by one point at Texarkana and only by one point at Bentonville. Mountain Home is number 16, and Mills had a phenomenal year. Next year, the Comets will move down to Class 4A. And speaking of Class 4A, we have highlights from last night's semifinal games in Quad A, and we'll head to Hot Springs for this week's Scholar Athlete of the Week. Next, you're watching Hooten's Arkansas Football. I'm Kaylee Jola. And I'm Kara Duke. And the Hazen Hornet says, stay tuned for Hooten's Arkansas Football. I'm Governor Mike Huck. Hooten's Arkansas Football, brought to you by Sonic. We call the toss, you can see that's President Eisenhower and the American Eagles flying high. I'm going to toss it, you're going to call it, you guys know what they said, all right? Get it while it's out. He said heads, and it's the Eagle. What do you want to do, buddy? Ball. Chapel Wildcats returned to Arkansas County last night for a rematch with the Stuttgart Rice Birds. Stuttgart slipped by Watson Chapel 20 to 19 in the regular season, but last night the teams were battling for a trip to the Class 4A state championship game. Early on, it was Stuttgart looking like a champion. The Rice Birds moving the ball when senior quarterback Chris Lammers hooks up with Allen Gentry. He shakes off a defender and picks up the first down. Three plays later, it's Keith Rick Smith taking it seven yards for the touchdown, and Stuttgart was up early, seven to nothing. But Watson Chapel's defense is pretty tough. Watch this. Lammers throws it right to safety, Kinoda in tow, and Kinoda dashes all the way across the field, 35 yards for the defensive touchdown. That tied it at seven. Then Smith takes over. Smith would rush for 200 yards last night, including a 40-yard rip just before the end of the first quarter. Same drive now, switching into the field. It's Smith squeezing his way in from five yards out, and Stuttgart goes up 14 to seven. The Rice Birds were up by 10 points at halftime and survived a Watson Chapel second half rally. Now, Stuttgart is back in the state title game for the first time since 1982. The Rice Birds will play win next Saturday at high noon, War Memorial Stadium. Final score from last night, the Stuttgart Rice Birds 38, Watson Chapel 28. Next Saturday at noon, it'll be the Wynn Yellow Jackets against the Stuttgart Rice Birds for the 4A State Championship. Wynn knocked out Monticello last year, and the Billies finished the season ranked number three by Hooton's Arkansas Football. Monticello is followed by Watson Chapel and Alma. Hope starts the second five, then it's Searcy, Osceola, Greenwood, and Arkadelphia. West Helena is number 11, then it's Crossett, Robinson, Batesville, and Magnolia. Siloam Springs made the playoffs this year. The Panthers are followed by the Greyhounds, the Devil Dogs, and the Golden Goblins. And Malvern rounds out the top 20. Coming up next, more of Hooton's Arkansas football. Class 3A highlights are straight ahead. Hi, I'm Letitia Edwards. And I'm Alicia Whitmore. And, and the Scrappers say, stay tuned for more Hoons Arkansas football. First Security Bank. This game gets you to the game that puts you in the state championship. Grab somebody. It's no surprise Nashville coach Billy Laird was reminding his team that they were only one win away from the state semifinals last night at Scrapper Stadium. Nashville was seeking an amazing ninth consecutive trip to the semis. The surprising part was their opponent, the Dumas Bobcats, who had started the season one and six and stunned the Nashville faithful early as Matthew Rush gets loose. 40-yard gain on Dumas' first possession. Four plays later, Rush squeezes through and the Bobcats were up seven to nothing. Nashville responded, and like most of the night, it was the Willie Hobson show as he hauls in the toss from quarterback Brian Pope, then gets loose up the middle. Hobson finished the game with 259 yards rushing and four touchdowns, including this two-yarder. 
The crowd was crunk, but Cinderella still wanted to party. That's Rush again, splitting the defense for Dumas. It's a 70-yard touchdown run for the Bobcats. Rush would finish the night with a team-high 161 yards. Nashville's defense finally made a stand as Donnie Langston and Charles Green turned back rush on a fourth and goal from the two. That started the second quarter, and the scrapper defense would shut out Dumas in the second half to set up a rematch next week with defending state champ Boonville. Final score, Nashville 54, Dumas 27. You guys burned the right thing. Show the show the people why you're here. Prove to them. Let them find out people in other parts of the state that don't know anything about Star City. You want to shock the world? You want to shock the state of Arkansas? They will talk about this for years. That's Star City coach Buck James, whose team had the unenviable task of traveling to Class 3A number one ranked Warren last night. Star City started great though. A 47 yard kickoff return from Randy Williams. But the drive would stall on downs and moments later, Warren went to work with Kerry Weaver taking off down the far sidelines. The Lumberjacks second play goes for 27 yards. Then, senior quarterback Reed McKinney finds standout receiver Brett Smith. This guy is fun to watch. He's one of the state's top juniors. Smith stepped out of bounds, but two plays later, McKinney finds Terrence Ingram in the end zone, and Warren covers 77 yards in just six plays for a 7-0 lead. The Lumberjacks scored three touchdowns in the second quarter, and their defense was impressive, too. It was 28-0 at halftime. The final, Warren 49, Star City 0. The undefeated Pulaski Academy Bruins entered last night's game against Dollarway with a high-flying offense, but the Bruins were concerned about Dollarway's speed. And early on, it's the Cardinals' senior quarterback, Eddie Ringo, showing some speed. Three-yard touchdown dive. That put Dollarway up early. Then, as Pulaski Academy was mounting a second quarter drive, quarterback Thomas Thrash lost it up, but it's intercepted by Dollarway's Andre Bennett. And this is the kind of speed the Bruins were worried about. Bennett goes up the sidelines, twisting and turning, reversing field. He is not going to go down. Still on his feet. Finally, PA would stop him at the one yard line, but Dollarway would score on its next play for a 14 to nothing lead. Pulaski Academy's sophomore quarterback, Adam Thrash, that's Thomas's younger brother, checks in at quarterback in the second quarter and hits Blake Miller in stride. A sweet 60-yard TD toss with just five minutes left before the break. But the rest of the way, Dollar Ways D was beasted. In fact, neither team scored in the second half. And next week, Dollar Way will play host to Warren with a trip to Little Rock on the line. Final score, Dollar Way 14. Pulaski Academy, seven. The Cardinals and the Lumberjacks hold on to the top two spots in Hooton's Arkansas Football Class 3A rankings. That should be a great game between the two next Friday in Pine Bluff. The other two remaining teams played for the state championship last year, and they will meet again next Friday in Boonville when the Strappers take on the Bearcats. Pulaski Academy finishes the year 12 and one and ranked number five by Hooton's Arkansas Football. Then it's Clarksville, Star City, Dumas, Fort Ice, and Rivercrest. The Sand Lizards start the second 10, and they're followed by Yelville Summit, Ashdown, Gosnell, and BB. Then it's Truman, Hamburg, Ozark, Curry Grove, and D Queen. Coming up next, Class 2A highlights on Hooton's Arkansas football and our Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week. Straight ahead, you're watching Hooton's Arkansas football. There has absolutely never been a better time to buy than right now. Brought to you by Arkansas Heart Hospital. And we'll begin our Class 2A highlights with number one, Shiloh Christian, looking for a fifth consecutive trip to the state finals. And last night in a quarterfinal game, playing host to Camden Harmony Grove. The Hornets stung Shiloh early as Harmony Grove quarterback Ronald Askew hits Josh Green in stride for the 68-yard touchdown, and Harmony Grove was up seven to nothing but the Saints would take the lead on two straight Rhett Lashley touchdown tosses. First to James Schistler, and a little bit later to Drew Tucker. The Shiloh defense held the vaunted Harmony Grove running game to just 68 yards, and Lashley added three more touchdowns as the Saints roll. Final score, Shiloh Christian 51, Camden Harmony Grove 
21. Shiloh Christian and Junction City had a wild game three years ago, and Friday night, Junction City was in Carlisle, fighting for a chance to play Shiloh again. Junction City quarterback Phillip Davis placed both ways for the Dragons, and he returned the fumble 37 yards early on to set up Junction City's first score. Then Davis doing it on offense, runs it all the way down to the one. On the next play, it's Ryan Sweet scoring for the Dragons, and Junction City led seven to nothing. Carlisle suffered from a lot of pain last night. That's Kevin Payne, bouncing outside, running all the way to the concession stand. Payne ate Carlisle's lunch, rushing for 184 yards, 14 yards per carry. Davis sneaks in for the touchdown, and Junction City's defense made more big plays the rest of the way. Final score, Dragons 35, Carlisle 21. An overflow crowd Friday night at Hampton's Arnold Stadium came to see if the Bulldogs could slow Augusta's Red Hot Devils, who slew 7AA East Giant Rising just a week ago. Who let the dogs out? Who let the dogs out? We're not sure, but Augusta played the role of dog catcher Friday night. Watch the end of this routine running play. Hampton tailback linebacker Clarence Sumler is shaken up and he could not return. That's a huge loss to Hampton, which had trouble both running and stopping the run. But Hampton would score first. Senior running back Daryl Smith sprints 41 yards for the touchdown. The conversion was good and Hampton led eight to nothing. Augusta answered just a couple of plays later. 235 pound Antonio Gant would break a tackle and then rumble past the Hampton secondary. Gant ran for 164 yards on 17 bruising carries and the Red Devils trailed only eight to six. Augusta shut down Hampton in the second half and the Red Devils offense did not commit a turnover for the second week in a row. Final score, Augusta 18, Hampton 8. Augusta is, in my mind, physically the most talented team we played all year. They've got great running backs, they're very strong, they've got good linemen that really block. They don't do anything fancy, they just line up and physically wear you down and that's, that's pretty much what they did to us tonight. And here is a look at Hootons Arkansas football class 2A ranking Shallow Christian held Harmony Grove's potent rushing attack to just 86 yards on the ground and won by 30 points. Next week, the Saints welcome Junction City to the field of champions in Springdale. Augusta has had no turnovers the past two weeks and had no trouble with Hampton last night. 18 to eight, the Red Devils advance. Hampton had the turnovers and suffered two key injuries last night. Harmony Grove finishes the year at number four. Congrats to the Hornets on their finest season ever. Junction City is number five. The Dragons will go to Shiloh Christian next week for a rematch of that 1999 quarterfinal game that Shiloh won 70 to 64. Carlisle starts the second five. Barton won last night, beating Desert for the second time this season. 22 to seven was the final. Barton will play host to Augusta next week. Harding Academy finishes the season at number eight. There's Ryzen and Charleston. Mineral Springs starts the second 10. The Hornets are followed by Danville, Foreman, Murfreesboro, and Hazen. Desert finishes the year at number 16. Then it's Greenland, Mayflower, Mark Tree, and Foxite. Now the Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week. Hot Springs lineman Tyler Morgan has three things that impress college recruiters. Size, strength, and a 3.5 GPA. He says succeeding in the classroom just takes a little discipline. You just got to make time. You know, there's a lot of distractions out there, you know, to go out with your friends and hang out. But sometimes you just have to go home and do your work. Congrats to Tyler Morgan, our Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week. Thanks again for watching Hootons Arkansas Football tonight here on Channel 4. We will be back next week at a special time next Sunday afternoon at 1230. We'll have highlights from the Class 4A and 5A state title games, plus the AAA and AA semifinals. That's next Sunday. Remember, a special time next Sunday at 1230. And we look forward to seeing you here on Hootons Arkansas Football.
You make sure you're physical. Well, I'm riding on the ball game. You get that blood in your eyes, and you play with heart. Check this out.